right. Yo, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to play classic PlayStation 1 games on your PC using the Duck Station emulator. If you're feeling nostalgic and miss those legendary games like Tekken 3 or Gran Turismo 2, don't worry, you can play them all on your PC with super clear graphics and smooth gameplay. So make sure to watch the video till the end. Before installing, make sure your PC meets the minimum requirements. An operating system, Windows 10 or 11, a modern 64-bit processor from Intel, AMD, or Apple Silicon, at least 4 gigabytes of RAM, and a graphics card that supports OpenGL 3.1, Direct3D 11, or Vulkan 1.0. Make sure you also have enough free storage for the emulator and game files. For more details, check the image on screen. If all the requirements are met, let's move on to the first step, downloading the Duck Station emulator from the official website at duckstation.org. On the main page, select Windows, and you'll be redirected to a new page. On that page, click the Download Duck Station button to start downloading. After finishing the Duck Station download, the next step is to download the Visual C++ runtime, which is required for the emulator to run properly on your PC. Step 2. We'll download the BIOS file for DuckStation. The BIOS is important because it allows the emulator to run the PlayStation system correctly. Just open your browser, search for DuckStation BIOS, and download it from a safe and trusted website. Step 3. Once all the files have been downloaded, place them together in one folder to keep things organized. Then, extract all the files so they're ready to use. Next, if your PC doesn't have the Visual C++ runtime installed yet, you can go ahead and install it first. But in my case, I won't install it again because it's already installed on my PC. Step 4. After you've extracted all the files, just head into the DuckStation folder and double-click on DuckStation QT to get it running. When you first open DuckStation, you'll be greeted with the Welcome to DuckStation screen. On this initial page, you can choose your preferred language and customize the theme to your liking. Additionally, you can enable or disable automatic updates to keep DuckStation always up to date with the latest version. Next, click the Next button. In the BIOS image section, you'll be asked to add the BIOS file you already have. To do this, click Browse. Then navigate to the folder where you saved the BIOS file you downloaded earlier and click Select Folder. All right, here you can see the BIOS files have appeared. You can select a BIOS for each region, NTSCJ for Japan, NTSCUC for the US and Canada, and PAL for Europe or Australia. If you're not sure which one to choose, just click the Refresh List button and the system will automatically detect the correct BIOS for you. Now, in the Game Directory section, you can add the folder where your games are stored. Simply click the Add button, then choose the folder where you've saved your games. After that, click Select Folder and choose Yes to add it. Once it's added, the folder will appear in the list below. When everything looks good, click Next to continue to the next step. In the Controller Setup section, we can configure our controller settings. But for now, we'll skip this part and set it up later. Next, we have the Graphics Setup section. Here we can adjust the graphics settings. Just like the previous section, 
We'll configure this part later. In the Retro Achievement section, since we don't have an account, we'll skip this part for now. At this stage, the initial setup process is complete. After completing the initial setup, Duck Station will open automatically. Once it's open, you'll see an update notification from the emulator. If you don't want to update right now, click Skip This Update. But if you'd like to update to the latest version, click Download and Install. This is the main interface of the Duck Station emulator. Here you can see the list of PlayStation 1 games you own. As you can tell, the games don't have any cover art yet. So, in this step, we're going to add the covers to make the library look cleaner and more appealing. Open Google and search for PSX Cover Duck Station. Then, select the result titled PSX Cover. You'll be redirected to a GitHub page. On that page, scroll down. And you'll find two cover options, Default and 3D Cover. Choose one and copy the link provided. After that, open the Duck Station emulator, go to the Tools menu and select Cover Downloader. Here, paste the cover link you copied earlier into the box. Make sure to check the Use Serial File Name option, then click Start. Wait for the process to complete, and once it's done, click Close. Now you can see that all your games have covers making your library look cleaner and more visually appealing. Next, in step six, we're going to set up the graphics. To do this, open the settings menu, then select graphics. In the renderer section, you can choose which rendering method DuckStation will use. This option determines how the game's graphics are processed by your PC. You can try each one to see which works best and runs the most stable on your system. Or if you're not sure, you can simply select Automatic, and Duck Station will adjust it for you automatically. If you choose Vulkan or Direct3D as the renderer, go to the Adapter section and select the graphics card you want to use. This way, Duck Station will utilize your GPU for smoother game performance. Next, in the Rendering menu, under Internal Resolution, as the name suggests, this setting controls the resolution level of your game emulation. The higher the resolution you set, the more performance it will require. So, if your game doesn't run smoothly, you can lower the resolution to improve performance. For the Down Sampling section, set it to Disabled. Next, we have Texture Filtering. This option helps to sharpen or smooth out the textures on 3D objects. If you choose Nearest Neighbor, the texture will stay close to its original look but appear slightly sharper. Meanwhile, Bilinear will make the image look smoother though it may slightly reduce some fine details. Then there's Sprite Texture Filtering, which works the same way as Texture Filtering, but this one is specifically for 2D games. For Dithering, this section controls how colors are displayed in the game. This feature helps reduce rough color gradients or visible banding on the screen. In this part, you can choose True Color to make the colors look smoother and more natural. Next is deinterlacing. This setting helps smooth out video or image edges that appear lined or flickery during motion. Here we'll choose Progressive, Optimal, since it provides a cleaner and more stable result for most games. Next, we have the Aspect Ratio setting. By default, PlayStation 1 games run in a 4x3 resolution, which doesn't fully fill modern screens. So here, you can choose Stretch to Fill to make the game display adjust and fill the entire screen. For the other settings like Crop, Scaling, and FMV Scaling, you can just leave them at their default settings. Next, we move on to the Advanced Graphics settings. Here, you can enable several important options, such as PGXP Geometry Correction to fix distortion on 3D objects, Force 4x3 for FMVS to keep cutscenes in their original aspect ratio, widescreen rendering to make the game fit widescreen displays without stretching, and FMV Chroma Smoothing to make video cutscenes look smoother with cleaner color transitions. Next, open the Advanced section. 
Here you'll find multi-sampling, which smooths out the game's graphics. Higher settings look better, but use more GPU power. For smoother performance, use two times or four times MSAA. If your PC is powerful, enable SSAA for the best visuals. Next, we're going to set up the controller. Open the settings menu, then select controllers. In the controller port one section, specifically under automatic mapping. If you're using an external controller such as a PlayStation or Xbox controller, connect it to your PC first. Once detected, an option called X input controller will appear. Select it. However, if you prefer to play using a keyboard, simply choose keyboard and the keys will be automatically mapped. If you encounter an SBI file issue when trying to run a game, don't worry. This usually happens because the game uses libcrypt protection. To fix it, open the settings menu, then go to advanced. Scroll down to the tweak slash hack section. Check the option, Allow Booting Without SBI File. After that, launch the game again. If a notification appears, just click Yes. Where are the eggs? The holes came out on the other side of the dragon world. We found some of the eggs, but they were too heavy to carry back. The other side of the world? The forgotten worlds. Spyro, you'll have to go. Nobody else can fit down the holes. Yeah, come on, let's go! Find the eggs and bring them back, Spyro. You're our only chance. You got it.
for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. See you in the next tutorial video.